Get ready for India's wildlife greats. The beautiful, powerful, rare, and dangerous, packed into this country full of Eastern charm. From long-legged tree dwellers and calculating killers to creatures with godly status. Meet them in an array of spectacular landscapes. From everlasting grassy plains to dense jungle and the holy waters of the Ganges. India is the jewel in Asia's crown, a country of incredible contrasts. Vibrant, majestic, and beautiful. Our experts have selected the 10 Indian animals tourists most want to see. Discover what makes these animals special and how they behave. Find out where to get up close and meet India's wildlife greats for yourself. First up is the sloth bear, the inspiration for the Jungle Book's Baloo. But this is no cartoon animal. It's one tough bear. It's out foraging in the toughest weather, a time when most bears would hibernate. A sloth bear may not look as threatening as a grizzly, but don't be fooled. Corner it and you're in real trouble. One of the best places to see them is in the forests of Palamau National Park in Bihar. Early explorers called them bear sloths because they thought they hung upside down in trees. When they realized they were wrong, they became sloth bears. If you want to see a wild one, be prepared to stay up late. They're most active in the evening. Sloth bears are smaller and shaggier than black or brown bears. They're also more hunched with squatter hind legs. They have a yellow or white chevron marking their chests, similar to the Asian black bear or moon bear. In fact, the moon bear gets its name from the crescent on its chest. Young sloth bears enjoy each other's company. They like to play fight. It's useful preparation for defending territory when they're older. Sloth bears climb with ease, but they prefer to knock honey and fruit to the ground where it's easier to pick up. There are many insects on the forest floor. Termites are a favorite food, but come packaged in hard earth mounds. So how does the sloth bear reach them? Step one. Sniff out the mound with your long nose. Step two, rip into it with your long curved claws. Step three, stick your snout in, keep the nostrils shut, and blow. Step 
sloth bears like their termites dust free. Step four, suck them up through the gap in your front teeth. Peeling back your lips helps the termites flood in. Our next wildlife great chooses far bigger prey than ants. Think of leopards and you think of Africa. But India has leopards too. Almost 10,000 of them. These loners are so adaptable, if you look hard, you'll find them just about anywhere. From thick forests to open country, and even large cities like Mumbai. Gir National Park in Gujarat is a good place to spot them. Leopards keep their dens well hidden. Two to three cubs is the usual litter size and they're born blind and helpless. The female moves dens regularly during the first few weeks to keep them safe from snakes and other big cats. The cubs don't venture out until they're six weeks old when they follow their mother on short trips. At four months, they'll join her on hunting trips to learn the tricks of the trade. Agile to perfection, the leopard's an adept climber. In the heat of the day, it likes to rest a long way from intruders, where it can't be disturbed. The topmost branch of a tall tree is ideal. Lurking in the dry grasslands below is a much larger predator, a relic from an ancient population. Not many people know there are lions here. This is India's rarest cat. Asiatic lions came from Africa to the Indian subcontinent 100,000 years ago. They once spread over the whole of northern and central India. The only place you'll find them now is in Gir National Park. Cattle also share the park. Local farmers must be vigilant because the lions are hungry cattle killers. This leopard, however, has other prey on her mind. An adult chital deer weighs as much as a man and makes a hefty meal. She bides her time. The deer can easily spot her in open ground. They'll have a head start in any attack. She needs to get close without being seen. The leopard stalks her prey until she's right up close and takes it by surprise. Of all the big cats, the leopard is the most powerful pound for pound. This kill will last her for nearly a week. A leopard is difficult to spot on safari. But it's hard to miss the animal coming up next. In India, all animals are sacred. And one of the most unlikely creatures has a temple to itself. 
In Deshnuk, in western Rajasthan, is the temple of Hindu deity Karni Mata, home to thousands of black rats. The ornate building dates from the early 20th century. The entrance is lavishly decorated with sculpted marble paneling. Here people flock to pay their respects to the rats living among the statues and shrines. To believers, these are no ordinary rats. They're the embodiment of the souls of the children of Karni Mata. Karni Mata was a 15th century mystic and an incarnation of Durga, the divine mother goddess. The story goes that Karni Mata tried to restore a dead child back to life, but was blocked by Yama, the god of death. From then on, Karni Mata ensured that when any of her people died, they would temporarily inhabit the body of a rat. That's why these rodents are so revered. They embody the spirits of children who may be reborn in the next life as sadhus or holy men. Special holes around the courtyard allow the rats private passage throughout the temple. The rats make their nests in the temple walls. Females mate at three months old and produce six litters a year. Just 10% survive, keeping the numbers in check. Only the fittest make it to adulthood. The rats have their every need catered for. They have a luxury place to live and are fed milk, grain and bread by visitors. Holy men come every day to share their meals with the rodents. They may not be your ideal dinner date, but it is considered a blessing to eat food drenched with rat saliva. These black rats live in harmony with their human devotees. Surprisingly, few of the worshippers get sick after lunch at the temple. The swarming rodents may not appear divine to some of us, but to many, this is a very holy place, where it's a privilege to get married surrounded by hundreds of uninvited guests. Rats are not the only animals considered holy in India. Here are our five favorite animal deities. Nandi, the white bull, represents strength and virility. He escorts Shiva, the destroyer and regenerator of the universe. Garuda is the god of the birds, with the body of a man and the head and wings of an eagle. He carries Vishnu, the preserver of the universe. Hanuman is revered for his intelligence. He is a monkey with a sorcerer's powers. Sheshnag is the serpent god of a thousand heads. Vishnu sleeps on a bed of his coils. Finally, there's Ganesh, the much-loved god with the head of an elephant and the body of a man. He is brave, loyal, strong and gentle, and forgets nothing.
Moving from the godly to the regal, meet the antelope of the kings, once a favorite of the Maharajas. Black bucks lead a heated territorial life on India's grassy plains. The largest herd is 2,000 strong. You'll find them in Velavador National Park in the western state of Gujarat. Come here in February and you're in for a fantastic display. This is when males compete for land to lure the does in heat. Meet the king of the antelopes, a dominant buck. He's an old-fashioned monarch whose aim in life is to guard his territory and maintain a harem. He marks the center of his kingdom with a dung pile and scent marks the boundaries with a musky secretion from the glands below his eyes. Everybody wants to expand their empire. It's a battle for real estate. Territories are packed together and are little bigger than a basketball court. Each male's itching to get a slice of his neighbor's land, including this subordinate male, who's out to challenge the dominant buck. Buck's horns are their best weapon. They develop the spiral shape at age two. A clash risks serious injury. Finally, our dominant male holds his own and chases the challenger off. His success has not gone unnoticed. As evening approaches, the black buck are joined by harriers. They dance together in the fading light. Our defeated challenger is badly hurt and barely has the energy to move. That's bad news when Indian jackals are on the prowl. Day breaks and the subordinate males not made it through the night. This is a good season for jackals to gorge themselves and harriers get to pick at the scraps. Triumphant, our dominant male sits pretty in his territory. If a doe is to reach him, she must first fend off lesser suitors on the way. She leaps into the air at the height of a grown man. An impressive dung pile is as attractive to her as the sweetest aftershave. Our buck is heavily in demand. Now the doe's here, she makes the buck work for his date and he struts an alluring dance. Success, and the king and his mate are together at last. From regal heights to the watery underworld, up next are two giants whose ancestors walked with dinosaurs. Meet two of the world's largest crocodiles, the mugger and the narrow-nosed gharial. The menacing mugger is a titan amongst freshwater crocs at over 16 feet or five meters long. 
Gharials are bigger still at up to 23 feet or 7 meters. The sun rises over the Ganges. Hindus believe these holy waters cleanse their souls. Bathers have no idea India's largest freshwater crocodile lurks below. Gharials have been accused of stealing bodies from funeral pyres on the riverbanks, but they don't attack people. They are shy fish eaters. They spend most of their time underwater, revealing only their telltale nostrils and eyes. The Gharials' narrow snout is designed to slice through the water. The jaw is lined with up to 110 razor-sharp interlocking teeth. Once it sees a fish, the gharial lifts its head out of the water to reposition the prey for swallowing. Like other crocodiles, it must eat above the surface to avoid swallowing too much water, or it will drown. It's easy to tell males and females apart. Mature males have a bulbous lump on the tip of their nose called a gara or bowl in Hindi. This may seem ugly to us, but to a female, the bigger the bump, the more attractive the croc. The gara also acts as a bubble blowing device, all important for attracting females during courtship. Madras Crocodile Park is the best place to catch gharials. It's also a great location to see some truly ruthless killer crocs, the muggers. These serious looking reptiles won't steal your purse. The name mugger comes from a Hindi word meaning mysterious sea creature. Unlike gharials, they will attack humans, but that doesn't mean other predators leave them alone. When this mother croc goes out to hunt, she leaves her nest open to another reptile. Fresh crocodile eggs are a real favorite for a monitor lizard. A monitor's unusual in risking such a heist, Crocodiles don't negotiate when it comes to defending a nest. They'll snap at anything that comes too close. They make a meal out of at least one human a year. So don't mistake the smiling mugger for a harmless gharial. Know your crocs before you step in the water. Let's recap on our first five Indian wildlife greats. First, we met the bungling sloth bear, who just loves eating termites. Then the elusive leopard, happy in town or country. Next were the black rats, at home in their five-star temple. King of his own territory was the black buck. We've just seen India's colossal crocs, the gharials and the muggers. Our next wildlife great is a very unlikely unicorn, one of India's most endangered mammals. This animal would put a knight in shining armor to shame. The Asian one-horned rhinoceros is only found in the Indian subcontinent. The best place to see them is Kaziranga National Park in Assam. Here they share the bathing pools and grassland with elephants, hog deer, and the world's largest herd of wild Asian buffalo.
Minor birds use rhinos as feeding platforms, picking ticks and other parasites off their backs. They follow the rhinos as they graze, snacking on insects stirred up in the grass. Male rhinoceros unicornis weigh in at well over the weight of an average family car. So how do you tell this rhino from its cousins? Look at the horn. The Indian rhino, like the Javan rhino, only has one horn. The African black and white rhinos and Sumatran rhino all have two horns. The mouth tells you what the rhino eats. The Indian and Javan rhino have pointed mouths and overhanging top lips. They can tackle many different plants. The African white rhino has a square lip designed just for grass. The Indian rhino's skin is unique. It's armor plated. The shields are formed by heavy folds of skin at the shoulder and hindquarters, making it look prehistoric. Rhino horn is still sought after in Asia as an aphrodisiac and cure-all. Made of densely matted hair and as long as a carving knife, it's quite a weapon. Baby rhinos are born without horns. This three-day-old calf weighs as much as an adult woman. But seen next to his mother, he still has a lot of growing to do. At 18 months, he stops suckling and moves on to eating grass and leaves. At three, he feels more secure and finds a friend to play with. For a male rhino, defending a territory is a smelly business. Boundaries are sprayed with urine and dung is built into enormous piles. The dung heap is a warning signal to rivals, but a magnet for insects. Butterflies drink up the minerals and birds follow them in. A rhino's nose is sensitive, but his eyesight is lousy he couldn't see across a street. He may think he's alone in his territory, but he could be sharing it with several subordinate males. These trespassers are pushing their luck. If they get too near, the dominant male can become dangerously aggressive. This one's lucky. An angry rhino can kill if provoked. And don't think you're safe in a vehicle. Get too close or surprise one, and that horn can pierce metal. At least two people a year die from rhino attack. Tick-pecking minas are often found atop a rhino, but here are five other Indian birds to look out for. The Pied Kingfisher stands out from the crowd. It's the largest bird capable of true hovering flight. Spotted Owlets, one of the cutest birds around. They come out after dark to feed on insects and rodents. Alice's fish eagle is a raptor to be reckoned with. Fish, birds, and reptiles are all within its grasp. Elegant saurus cranes mate for life. Their bond is so strong, they're an Indian symbol of fidelity.
Lastly, the peacock, known as the bird with a hundred eyes. The wheel-like tail represents the cosmic cycle and the all-seeing sun. Peacocks have great flair, but coming up next are the animals that are top of the tree when it comes to character. We've chosen two monkeys for our Indian wildlife greats, the mischievous macaques and the long-legged langurs. You can catch them monkeying around in Manas National Park in Assam. Welcome to the world of rhesus macaques, where life is full of fun. Macaques are social animals. They gather at the river's edge to lick salts from the stones on the shoreline. But when it comes to mealtimes, the macaques move up to the trees. One of their favorite foods is the flower of the leafless flame of the forest. They peel back the petals and eat only the sweet stamen inside. Some of the stamens are stored in special cheek pouches so they can save them for later. Rose-ringed parakeets join in the feast by licking the nectar. And chital deer vacuum up any fallen petals. There are more agile acrobats in the branches than the macaques. The Hanuman Langers. Langers have much longer limbs than macaques. Langer means long tail in Hindi, and it's easy to see why. Their tails act as a stabilizer, helping them balance as they leap from tree to tree. Hanuman langurs share the forest of eastern India with a more primitive relative, the slow loris. The loris gets its name from a Dutch word for clown. Usually nocturnal, it picks its way along branches looking for insects to eat. It has nails on all but its second fingers, which end in a claw, a useful grooming tool. Hanuman langurs come down from the trees to drink, pick up fallen fruit, or replenish body salts by licking earth. They won't stay long though if our next animal's lurking in the leaves. Like it or not, the fascination provoked by this hunter makes it a true wildlife great. Cobras are both feared and revered throughout India. Snakes matter here. The country's full of them, 238 species in all. Cobras are the most poisonous. There's the spectacled cobra, the monocled cobra, and the king cobra. Our first slippery serpent is the spectacled cobra, the most celebrated of all snakes in India. It's also one of the most deadly. On the 5th of July, in the tiny village of Bhattashirala in Maharashtra, the villagers celebrate the Festival of Snakes. Cobras are taken to the temple in a grand procession and charmed outside. Cobras are the snakes most commonly used by snake charmers. It's not the sound of the flute that lures the deadly serpent out of its basket. Snakes are deaf, 
they haven't any ears or even eardrums. The cobra senses vibrations through its skin, muscle, and bones. These vibrations are transmitted to its inner ear. The music is too high pitched for the cobra to pick up. It sees the movement of the flute as a threat and writhes up to defend itself. Cobras spread their hoods when they're aggravated. The spectacled cobra flares its hood wider than any other. On the back, it has classic cobra markings. Two rings mimicking a pair of eyes, fooling predators into thinking it's facing them, so they daren't attack it from behind. Cobras don't always have striking markings. Sometimes they're pure white, like this albino. Cobras are respected so much in India that few people will kill one preferring to release captured snakes back into the wild. The spectacled cobra has a much shinier sister with only one circle on the back of her hood. This is the monocled cobra, revered in both Hindu and Buddhist mythology. Buddha was protected from a storm by the cobra spreading its hood above his head. In thanks, Buddha touched the snake and his blessing remained as the mark on its hood. These snakes are not to be trifled with. Each year, thousands of people die in India from cobra bites. However, there is a cure which helps fight the poison. Cobras are milked for their venom, and from this, anti-venom is made. In fact, cobra poison has many hidden properties and is even being studied as a potential cure for cancer. Meet India's serpent royalty, the King Cobra. Come across one of these in the forest and you've reason to be scared. Stretching further than a New York taxi, this is the longest venomous snake in the world. These tiny King Cobra babies push their way out of their eggs with their heads. Juveniles are black with yellow stripes, which fade as they get older. This one's only as long as a ruler and may look harmless, but its bite is just as venomous as an adult's. You may think you look tasty, but a king cobra has only one thing on his lunch menu, and that's other snakes. He hunts out his prey using his forked tongue to taste their scent in the air. Having spotted his prey, the King Cobra strikes fast, aiming for the head. Hunting is a risky business. His venom is lethal, but so is his praise. The Cobra sinks in his long fangs, releasing a teaspoon of poison each time, enough to kill 20 men. Within seconds, the victim is paralyzed. Slowly, the cobra swallows down the meal into his long stomach. There's such a huge variety of snakes in India, it's no wonder they play such a big role in Indian folklore. Deadly Indian cobras are difficult to spot, but you won't miss our next animal about town. In India, elephants are something special. They were first domesticated at least 3,000 years ago. A highly intelligent animal, the elephant is respected and worshipped throughout the country participating in many Hindu festivals. The Mahouts who train the elephants stay with them for life, building an extremely strong bond. Elephants are still used today for logging and to transport goods and people. So how do you tell an Indian elephant from its African brothers? 
The elephant is the largest mammal in India. It weighs in at five and a half tons, and a fully grown bull elephant can be up to 11 feet or three meters tall. African elephants, however, are 40% bigger and 30% taller. The most well-known difference between these two giants is the size of their ears. Our Indian elephants are smaller. An elephant's trunk is its best known trademark. It's made up of 40,000 different muscles and not one bone. The Indian elephant has only one finger-like projection at the tip of its trunk, rather than two. However, our Indian elephant is much better at using its trunk than the African ones. Its trunk muscles are better coordinated. Elephants walk on tiptoe. Only the very end of their toe bones touch the ground. Their heel bones rest on a fatty cushion to help spread the weight. A good place to see a herd of wild elephants is the lakes of Periyar National Park in Kerala. Keeping cool is a major occupation. Fanning the ears is instinctive. Babies can do this from birth. That's more that can be said for the trunk. This little calf doesn't seem to have got the hang of using his best asset. An Indian elephant's pregnancy lasts 22 months. A newborn calf is twice as tall as a human baby, but 38 times its weight. Babies suckle with their mouth, not their trunk, and take 10 years to wean. Young calves have a careful eye kept on them by their mothers and other females in the herd. Elephants communicate mainly by touch and making deep grumbling sounds that are amplified inside their trunks. They can hear far deeper sounds than we can detect. They communicate across long distances and talk to each other by infrasonic calls, which can travel through the ground and be heard six miles or 10 kilometers away. But when it comes to affairs of the heart, communication breaks down. Bull elephants can get aggressive when they're after females. In spite of their occasionally feisty nature, elephants make for a great vantage point on which to discover India. Let's recap on the nine Indian wildlife greats we've seen so far. Heading the show was the scruffy old sloth bear. Next, we spotted the leopard in the forests of Gir. In Rajasthan, we saw black rats living in the lap of luxury. In Gujarat, we met black buck, antelope of the kings. Next were the gharials and muggers, goliaths among crocodiles. Then, the giant unicorn, the one-horned rhinoceros. High up in the Indian jungle were the macaques and langurs. The deadly dancing cobra has taken our bronze medal. And our penultimate Indian wildlife great is the elephant. Elephants are the only animals that our number one would think twice about attacking. This makes them the ideal perch on which to view India's most famous big cat. Our ultimate wildlife great is the jewel in India's crown, the Bengal tiger. A symbol of India's wilderness, a hundred years ago, there were 40,000. Today, 
Only 3,000 remain. Bandavgar Tiger Reserve in Madhya Pradesh is a superb place to see them. Tiger cubs may be born helpless and blind, but these are India's ultimate jungle predators in the making. Let's discover what these cubs will need to become perfectly designed killers. The famous orange and black stripes break up their outline so they melt into the background. It's a perfect coat for a future assassin. The eyesight develops to become piercingly accurate so they can spot the slightest movement in the undergrowth and zero in on their prey. Tigers are silent stalkers. Huge paws and careful balance will help the cubs edge their way quietly through the undergrowth. They will develop huge muscles in their limbs. These will give them the power to sprint over short distances. In the future, the razor-sharp claws will help the cubs latch onto prey and bring it down. The cubs' canines, now barely visible, will grow to be nearly ten times the length of ours. White spots will be used to show aggression. When a tiger turns them forward, it means business. As adults, they will hunt alone like their mother. She must kill at least every three days to keep her family from going hungry. To a tiger, these langers are fair game, especially on the ground. Alarm calls are used to alert the troop. The tiger's too quick for a juvenile. Her canines kill instantly. This is a mere snack for the tiger family. The mother will have to kill again soon. With the cutest cubs, the most fashionable coat in the jungle, teeth like daggers, and the art of killing perfected. The Bengal tiger is the pride of India. It deserves prime place amongst our 10 Indian wildlife greats. This is just a glimpse of the best of the wildlife that thrives in India's spectacular landscapes. Look out for these key animals and who knows what other Eastern treasures you might find in this sacred and colorful country.